Okay, so let's have a talk here. We just did the third commandment. I redid it. I've already got the first five done, but the third commandment, I felt uncomfortable with, um, with, well, go watch the video. <laughs> You'll find out. But I also discovered that the apostate Christians have a problem. And it is rooted in the Ten Commandments. They teach that we don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. Now, some of you, if you're apostate Christians, you're going to be going, No, we don't. No, we don't. Yes, you do. Absolutely, you do. You say, Oh, I'm not under law, but I'm under grace. I don't have to obey law anymore. Yeah, we'll go murder someone. Yeah, but after you murder them, Walk into the police department and tell them you murdered someone. Hand him the gun or knife or whatever you used. Knife is brutal. Hand him the gun, smoking gun. <laughs> hand it to him, still smoking. Don't hand it to him like that, though. You know, you never hand someone a gun like that. The proper way to hand a gun is to turn it around pointing towards you and hand them the stock, the handle. And so hand him the gun and say, I just killed someone. Have a good day. <laughs> Walk out. See if you get out the door. See if you get out the door. Yeah? You're not going to. <clears throat> so, when we talk about the Ten Commandments, we're talking about the New Testament. And we're showing that in this mini-series. We've got ten videos we're producing. One for each commandment. And we're reading it in the Old Testament in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, because they appear twice in the Old Testament. And then we go into the New Testament, and we read where it was, it was validated there, again, for Christians. But um, the third commandment is different than what we usually teach people. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Now, we talked about this. That, that, well, the popular way of interpreting that, and you'll hear it preached from pulpits, which is the, that's the worst thing, is that you hear it preached from pulpits that you shouldn't use the, the word God as a swear word. That that is what it means. It can't be farther from the truth. It doesn't mean that at all. It has nothing to do with that. Zero. It has zero to do with that. Because, as I said, God is not God's name. So if you use the term God as a swear word, it has nothing to do with the third commandment. It says, taking the name of the Lord your God in vain. So, using God as a swear word has nothing to do with it. But then you've got this other idea that's that's kind of in our court history where you swear an oath on the name of God with your hand on the Bible. So help me God. In God's name, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That is, that is taking the name of the Lord in oath. Now, the commandment doesn't mention oath at all. Okay, And when you look at the Hebrew, if you want to look at the Hebrew under the Mesoretic text, which is not a very good idea, but the Greek is kind of ambiguous. It just says take, like take. But the Hebrew underlying it, and the, and the Jewish people understand it this way. Dennis Prager on Prager University, he was interviewed and asked what the most egregious sin was in his religion, and, and he said it was this one. And, he's, and he, amazingly, came out and said exactly what I've been saying it means. And this is how I've always taught it, is that it means the, the take is actually, the verb means to carry around, and it's to identify with the Lord. And vain means desolation, nothing can grow there. So that's why <laughs> they're not teaching the Ten Commandments. They're telling their people in the apostate churches that they don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. 
Well, the third commandment is to not carry around the name of the Lord your God in desolation. Don't identify with God and have barren soil in your heart. That's why the apostate churches say they don't need to obey God to be saved. Because they want to protect their right to have barren soil and a hardened heart that doesn't bear fruit for the Lord. It all goes hand in hand. They are disobedient children, and they give themselves the right to be dis disobedient by first off reinterpreting the third commandment into something trivial, like using this word God as a swear word. That's trivial compared to the, the third commandment and what it really means. And then they justify not obeying at all. They don't think that it's necessary to obey God in order to be saved. In fact, they even go further by teaching their people that you can't obey God, that all your works are like filthy rags, even after you become a Christian, even if you're seeking God and listening to the Holy Spirit and doing what God says to do, that those are even filthy rags. And then they teach that you can't help but sin as long as you're in the body. All of these things are layers and layers to try to protect them from having to bear good fruit so that they have a barren soil for their heart. And you know that when, if you ever try to interact with them, especially if you try to read them Jesus' words, try reading Jesus' words directly to them, they will as fast as flash lightning reinterpret it. They will not let Jesus speak. They won't. They do not let Jesus speak. They hate it. And, and you'll see, if you try to correct them on it, they will get very venomous, and they will attack you. Well, you're not a Christian. Well, you are this, and you're so prideful. And all these other blasphemous accusations to hinder the way of the Lord. That's why the apostate church one of the reasons it's in the situation it's in is because they have reinterpreted the third commandment to something comparatively as trivial. And that doesn't mean you should go around speaking foul words. You know, we're actually commanded not to do that. But this is one of the Ten Commandments here we're talking about, that they're reinterpreting to something else so that they obliterate the third commandment. So it's not there. So now you know the secret of the apostate church and how they stay in their sin and keep the people who are in their churches in their sin. But I expect much better of you because you're here at the channel, you got your ears open, your eyes open, you're reading Jesus' words, you're hearing Jesus' words, and you're obeying Jesus' words. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.